for coming to the booth 6313 Niama Riser LLC. So uh, we're showcasing many things here, which uh, all of uh, which have a world premiere: the CHP Evo engine, the NR1 uh, super mileage vehicle, as well as some of the parts which have not arrived due to FedEx's uh, loss on that part. So uh, what I just want to disclose: I'm the CEO. My name is Heinz Gustav Reiser. Uh, I'm the inventor, as, I, as well as the CEO, as already mentioned, of Niama Riser LLC. And uh, just a few things to Niama Riser LLC. We are a mechanical engineering firm, uh, which has uh, been around since 2005. Uh, we have a rich and significant history in regards to awards. In the past two years, we've won two numerous awards through ANSYS, design competition galleries. So even before NASA, I can say that it's uh, open. Everybody can look it up. So, uh, uh, what other things? We're from Coshocton, Ohio. Uh, we're an American uh, engineering firm, so to speak. So, primarily, now we're uh, going out and venturing out into new fields like the automotive industry or internal combustion industry. Uh, now, uh, but the technology I want to start off with is the CHP Evo engine. The CHP Evo engine was developed by me back in 2005 when I had a flash of genius, as some people would want to argue, uh, because I tried to study all the different designs that were out there and available to, on the market uh, in regards to how can somebody make it better. I myself actually was kind of dissatisfied with the efficiency as well as the uh, service overhead of any internal combustion engine. So uh, I decided to see what improvements could be done and what improvements I could do. So I tried to swim free and think out of the box. So uh, I had, an, at one night I had the picture, mental picture of the CHP engine in front of me, how it could potentially work in a unit circle. So as you can see to the left of me, uh, my associate here is turning the CHP Evo engine. It is different in three primary things. It is, uh, its kinematic mechanism is different, its materials are different, it's actually a ceramic based engine. Most of the components are out of ceramics, the pistons, the bearings are all ceramic based, self lubricating uh, proprietary materials, as well as the cycle, the riser cycle in which the engine functions. So. We've decided, and due to the fact that you might not have heard of us before or in the past, you know, we've been kind of under the wraps and under the radar for the past six years because it's been since 2005 that we did not get the patents. It took so long for us to get the patents. We have now 35 patents internationally, uh, USA since we're a United States base, China, Germany, uh, EU, obviously, and some of some of the patents, uh, India, Japan. So we're internationally thinking ahead of our game here in regards to that technology. So what makes this engine unique, uh, coming back to the first part, which I had stated before, is the kinematic mechanism. The kinematic, kinematic mechanism allows this engine to operate in a one cycle or one stroke principle due to the riser cycle. I will go back into more detail here in a minute, but I just want to illustrate how this model here functions, which my associate is actually turning in the background, so it is not being powered by any means other than human uh, horsepower. So uh, what we have here is we have right now a power stroke occurring in one of the combustion chambers. As you can see, these white uh, pieces are the pistons actually, which are here out of the original material, ceramic as everybody can hear, so they're out of a ceramic material. You have a power stroke going on here, you have the expansion occurring while the mechanism as itself, without using any linkages, actually translates this force to combust and actually compress the second combustion chamber which is actually linearly disposed through a center line in, in a radius on the other side of the center slash pivot point of the engine. So the mechanism, frankly disclosed, 
you have a power stroke occurring here, vice versa, you have a power stroke occurring on the other side. So for every revolution of the crankshaft, you have two power strokes occurring, hence the one cycle principle. Now how this works is you have a two stroke uh, occurring up here. It is a hybrid between a two stroke and a four stroke. It is as clean as a four stroke, but yet, yet again it even surpasses the power to weight ratio of a two stroke due to the kinematic mechanism. So having said all of that, the two stroke is being facilitated not by an, uh, a pressure which usually comes out of the crankcase in any two stroke which all of you might know, but instead it is being facilitated through a twin charge air system and a holding tank, a storage tank as such. The storage tank is being supplied by fresh air uh, via a turbocharger and a supercharger which the storage tank has a constant pressure and volume which is being then delivered to the intake ports which are scavenging ports in the cylinder liners. In the background uh, you might see uh, there is actually the cylinder liner on the backboard here but we can show that also later on in more detail if you would want to visit us here at the booth. But there are scavenging ports in, in the combustion chambers intake and exhaust ports. The piston mantle actually allows these to open or close uh, depending upon the position of the crankshaft and uh, you have the scavenging occurring due to that constant pressure and volume which is in the holding tank of the system which is the riser cycle as such. So having said most of this about the CHP, right next to here you will see the model full size. The model full size right there actually is a one-to-one -one representation of the actual engine. Uh, as it stands here with those dimensions, it has an output value of 130 horsepower and 300 newton meters. So the size, the power to weight ratio in regards to the size is remarkable as well as also the fact that there's no oil running or flowing inside the engine. There's no water pump, no oil pump, no nothing. The engine is a dry running engine as well as you can see the fins here on the flywheel. The flywheel as such acts as a, as a storage a kinematic energy, inertial load as well as an impeller to actually force air through the mechanism, through the cylinder liners, alongside the cylinder liners and out the back on the other side to cool the combustion chambers while actually having a much significantly hotter combustion chamber and combustion occurring than in a regular model. So the CHP is the mother of all of our products. Everything began with the invention of the CHP back in 2005. Based upon the CHP technology which we've been developing for the past six years now, we've come up with other products, for instance, like the NR1 ceramic piston kits for regular internal combustion engines. We have right now a test bed driving on the road in the United States. I would like to invite anybody who's skeptical, skeptical of this technology to the United States if they're willing to come on their own buck because you know I need to save everything that I can <laughs> uh, based upon these new technologies they're costly to develop so the piston technology has no compression rings there are no rings required to compress uh, the fluids inside the combustion chamber the only thing we do require is a polymer based oil control ring the tolerances are significantly reduced to accommodate this fact and we've proven it and it actually drives out on the road. So as I had mentioned, you're more than welcome to visit my company and myself at, at location on site in the United States. Furthermore, we've also developed the NR1 super mileage vehicle to the left because of the fact that we, Niama Riser, I and my team wants to make the technology, the CHP technology available, readily available in a timely and efficient manner to the general public as soon as possible. And the only way to accommodate something like that in the current market is to come up with means to make it available. So we've come up with a platform like the NR1 super mileage vehicle due to the fact that everybody wants to get from point A to point B in, a, in an efficient and sound and beautiful manner. So the NR1 was the result of that thought. So the NR1 is primarily a platform on how to distribute and uh, get the engine out into the public and make everybody profit and the world profit in regards to the efficiency of the engine due to the efficiency of the CHP being 67% higher than, significantly higher than all the other engines out there currently make it available to everybody. So 
the inner one and its drivetrain also is unique, but I really don't want to dwell on that any more than we have already done. But uh, you're more than welcome to visit us later here at the booth to get a more in-depth look of our technologies and products, which we have, as well as potentially later on, because some of the parts are still held at customs, sadly, since we had to transport most of them from the United States via overnight freight. And uh, you might want to check back with us later in the week because I do not know how customs might want to cooperate with us. So I want to thank you all for your time and you're more than welcome to still ask me any questions here at the booth while I'm here. Other than that, uh, you're also more than welcome to visit us later for more in-depth uh, questions that you might have. So who, who's out? Uh, anybody having any questions here in the crowd? Who would want to have any questions or later on? I take it there are none yet, maybe later. So feel free to come in, uh, I'm here for you. So other than that, I don't think there's anybody behind me, correct? There isn't, I'm the last, so I'm the taillight. Maybe not the taillight in, in real life, but okay. Thank you, I appreciate it.